frontrunner, presidential candidate Ron Paul. Even mainstream media admits he's in second, third, and in some cases, first place. And of course, in national polls, he's the only person who can beat President Obama. And he joins us uh, today. Congressman, thank you for coming on. Alex, good to be with you again. It's good to have you with us. There is so much uh, happening. I've got a lot of questions, but what is most important, uh, Congressman, right now on your radar? It's continuing to do what I've been doing. You know, a lot of people say, well, what's your strategy? What are you going to do differently? And you know me well enough that probably the last 30 years, especially the last 10 years since we've known each other, I, I do the same thing over and over again, but I try to improve not only the delivery, but the message always stays the same. But we, we get better organized. So we'll continue to do that. And the next, I mean, the big thing now is these next three weeks. I mean, uh, you know how much energy we put into Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, you know, it offers an opportunity. It's a smaller state, and you can meet a lot of people, and you can do direct mail. So we've done our very, very best. We think we're in a good position, but we're going to work right up until, you know, the caucuses occur on the 3rd, and then, of course, the primary in New Hampshire on the 10th. But it's unbelievable how much... Uh, volunteer work we're getting and there's so much work going on outside of the campaign that's so fantastic so uh, I, I, I believe that could be our secret weapon that nobody measures the amount of activity going on outside the campaign but we're going to continue to do exactly what we're doing with a lot more energy and they continue to try to sell this 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 mind game or the self-fulfilling prophecy that even though he wins all these straw polls and even though he's always a top tier candidate you still can't have him but I think that hoax is really beginning to backfire on them. Yeah, I don't know how long they can get away with. Uh, you know, if Newt wins, uh, wins uh, Iowa, you know, he's he's the shoe in for the whole nomination. If I win, it's a total fluke, and I'm just a troublemaker and a spoiler. But uh, we still have to prove ourselves under the, the circumstances of the disadvantages with the mainstream media. But we know we know where we stand. We know what we have to overcome. And uh, I, I think I think we're doing a, a very good job on this. And uh, no matter how they spin it, uh, there's a limit to how they how much they can spin it. You know, even when even when they give me 90 seconds, actually, we've been able to turn that around and turn it into a positive. Uh, when you see guys like John Stewart and others, you know, just mocking, uh, you know, the unfairness of the system. So uh, we have to keep plugging along. That's all. They've tried to ignore you. Now that's failing. The attacks are beginning. Do you think that it's going to do the same thing again and boomerang back on them because the, the mainstream media and political system is so discredited? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, in a way, even though, you know, the uh, the kingmakers and the mainstream media and the establishment people are, are gunning, uh, you know, the other candidates, have you noticed that they're a little less aggressive? They're more aggressive against each other than they are against me because I think they know the significance of the number of people, and they're not going out of their way to offend uh, the, uh, they say, oh, there's just a couple percent, there's seven or eight percent. But they're being a lot more cautious because they know our percentages are much higher and we can play a significant role, and they're, they're being a little more cautious at least. If you were to you know, go after Obama more, pretty much run against Obama, transcend the other Republican minions and point out, as you have, that they're basically uh, just uh, rhino Republican versions of that and point out that you've pointed out the real problems and are the only candidate that has any shot at, at trying to turn the ship around. Well, actually, I think that is good strategy because I wish we had more polling, honest polling, uh, with my name against Obama because, you know, we appeal to a lot of independents and even some of the, the more sensible and honest liberals, you know, the progressives uh, that are anti-war. So I think what you're suggesting is very good, and I would have to admit I don't do enough of that. And I th it's a mixed bag. Politically, I think, is very, very good, and he deserves it, and that's who ultimately you have to run against. But in the primary, I'm not running against him. And I also like to be as upfront as possible, you know, when it comes to analyzing our tragedies and the foreign policy and monetary policy and the economic foolhardiness of it. And, you know, they've been going on for a long time, and it's both parties, but I should at least be more bipartisan and condemn uh, Obama just as much as I, I criticize uh, some of the things Republicans have done over the years as well. Look at Mitt Romney, his voting record, Obamacare. He is a Republican Obama. Vote in another Obama. Or look at Newt Gingrich. He's for carbon taxes, Obamacare-style stuff. He is another Obama. And so basically, A, 
it's a vote for Obama because either one of those guys is going to beat Obama, but B, it's a vote for Obama because they're just clones of him, just with a little bit different rhetoric. I think that is the secret weapon, Congressman. Yeah. And I got a little bit of in, but probably not as sharp as I could have or what you might have done. But, uh, you know, in the debate the other night, I said the two of them are totally on the defensive. They're defending their record. I mean, how can they def how can they lead lead our party if they're defending themselves for not being, you know, for having been like like Obama all along? So that that is the big issue. And uh, I think probably, uh, uh, you know, Gingrich has been pretty aggressive in that light, so maybe that's uh, one of the reasons he got bumped up a bit. So that's not a bad advice at all. Fall2012.com, it is absolutely essential. Obviously, everybody go out and get ready to try to be delegates. Everybody hit the ground in Iowa. I know I have family uh, who's actually gone to Iowa. So there is a massive grassroots operation. All the different ways people can get involved are at ronpaul2012.com. I want to go back uh, to the campaign here in a moment, sir, but they've obviously tried to keep you with 89 seconds in the CBS debate and other places from actually talking about the real issues. And instead, they'll ask you, what do you think of Newt? What do you think of Mitt? Uh, so they can basically still give you time and not get caught censoring you, but they still censor you in another way. What, what do you have to say about that? I mean, that's been ongoing, and I've lived with that for a long time. I have to be on guard for it but uh, and try to distract them from it. But that's, that's ultimately their, their goal is to make a subtle, if not blunt, assumption that, well, you, you can't win, and therefore uh, we shouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to you. But uh, the only way we can ultimately overcome that is success in Iowa, you know, as a beginning point. You know, if, if, we, if we do really well there... Uh, they're going to have a lot harder time doing that to us. I saw the Republicans here in Austin are going to protest Eric Holder, the Attorney General today, for the U.N. to oversee our elections. And I agree, that's certainly out of control and treasonous. But uh, this is the guy caught perjuring himself in the memo CBS released last week show that they said they were going to blame the guns in Mexico on the Second Amendment. Is that not a form of false flag against our most basic of rights, sir? And what would you do, uh, if President, uh, to people like uh, Eric Holder? Well, he should be immediately fired, and then there should be an investigation and find out if charges should be made. And that's obviously over the top. And all these kind of sting operations and false flag, uh, this is this is criminal. And I think they do it constantly. I think they were doing that when this, there was this uh, so-called attempt to uh, kill the Saudi or the Iranian ambassador. <laughs> you know, that that kind of stuff is just uh, way too much. But no, they should be investigating. And, and you know, that's one thing I think the uh, uh, government house committee is doing a pretty good job at investigating that. But uh, I, I don't know where the charges will be made, but he deserves to have charges, uh, you know, up against him. Well said, and you got it right the first time. The the claim of the used car sales wanting to kill the uh, Saudi ambassador, and even mainstream media had to admit that was totally phony and a pretext to attack Iran. Well, that was the the real the real excuse to blame it on it, on them, and and, uh, and and we know that is. Uh, you know, I just wonder about that whether that guy will ever get tried because if he does, maybe the truth will come out. And sometimes they won't try these people because they don't want the truth to come out. So uh, it's just another propaganda stunt, as far as I'm concerned. Now they want to go after Syria. It's now admitted the U.S., Israel, and others are staging giant military attacks inside Iran. Uh, what do you make of Congress not being consulted on that? Unfortunately, that's been happening for a long time, and Congress is just totally negligent. Uh, on this, and you know, the other night when they were talking about this in the debates, you know, on what the president's responsibility is, is when they, um, you know, shoot down or are able to get one of our drones. And the, the argument was, should we go in and get it, or should we just go in and, and, uh, and destroy it? And I tried to get attention on that. I, my, my suggestion would be, why don't we avoid it by not sending drones over a sovereign nation just looking for a problem to start another war. I mean, they never talked about, you know, the lack of wisdom of having been over there and losing a drone over a foreign nation, which we consider an enemy. I, I just think that is uh, the, it's a reflection of a policy that has to be changed. Uh, what's your view on the NDAA and, and uh, the end of posse commentatus and the declaration of the whole world as a battlefield? Yeah, well, I think the significant difference it's not so much in what they have done, but the announcement and the arrogance of it all that they actually put it into law. You know, 
our government's been involved with our CIA and involvement and overthrowing governments and this for a long, long time. And, of course, last uh, spring, I guess it was in February, where the administration admitted that they could assassinate American citizens, and now they're putting it into law. So this, this to me, is an extremely uh, wrong way to go. This is, this, this is a giant step. This should be the biggest news going right now. It's, a, it's a literally... Uh, uh, legalizing martial law, and yet, you know, in, in our debates, how often does it come up? It didn't come up at all. Uh, you know, and then the arrogance, and, and this is the one thing Rand got stopped, the arrogance of them trying to could push through on their voice vote that if you go through a trial and found innocent, the government wants the right to put you in prison for life anyway. And fortunately, that, they wanted to do that in voice vote, and he finally got a vote on that, and that was canceled out. But uh, that, that is arrogance of the administration and neglect of the Congress in using their authority and responsibility, as well as the people. That's why it's up to so many of us now to wake the people up, because they don't probably realize the significance of this. But this is big. This is big. You know, the monetary issue is big, all these things I've talked about. But this, this step where they can literally arrest American people, uh, American citizens, and put them away without a trial. And, and you heard Lindsey Graham say, well, if they ask for a lawyer, tell them no lawyer for you. I mean, that is arrogant and bold and dangerous. Uh, let's hope and pray that we can get that kind of stuff reversed. Uh, Congressman, we've only got a few minutes left with you here, and I wanted to continue uh, looking at the presidential race. What would be the first three things that you would do, the, the first three goals, when you got into office, when you were sworn in uh, in January of 2013? There, there, are, there are three big goals, but you might not be able to do as much all by yourself the first uh, few days, but you could change the foreign policy immediately and send a message to the world that we are not looking for more wars, we are looking for uh, you know, a more peaceful solution to, to the problems and that is to start bringing our troops home, which would send a message that that money is going to be spent at home instead of overseas, might send a message to the market that things will be different. But then other, other than that, then it would be working on the budget to cut the spending. You know, my proposal that uh, if, we, if we're serious about this, we have to cut the budget. I want to cut it first year at $2 trillion. And the other thing that must be changed is curtailing the power of the Federal Reserve to monetize debt and uh, get something passed where we can either or or both, you know, restrain the Federal Reserve to act on its own to billions and trillions of dollars in bailing out everybody around the world, as well as a thorough audit of the Federal Reserve, and then find out, uh, you, you know, find out exactly what they have been doing and, and, and then aim for legalizing the competing currency. Some of those, those messages, if we, if we change our foreign policy, bring our troops home, balance, start balancing the budget, uh, it, you don't have to wait for everything to be perfect. It's just the direction we're going. We, people might say, hey, you know, this is different. And maybe some optimism would come back, which we need a lot of. Beautifully said. Um, what can we do on the campaign trail briefly? And then finally, I, I, I know you've written a piece today. It's on your congressional site. It's also on Infowars.com about uh, forced uh, drug uh, mm. uh, research where they're trying to psychologically screen the kids, Internet kill switch admitted in the Washington Post. All of this is happening, but what can we do to ensure that you win in Iowa, Congressman, in closing? Well, let's continue to do what we're doing, and uh, if they're not anybody's not involved and want to, go to uh, Ron Paul 2012 and uh, find out because people can phone from home. Uh, they certainly can raise funds. People can are going out to Iowa. There's activity, but there's a lot of electronic uh, uh, activity going on, you know, with uh, automatic phoning and different things that's done. This is uh, very, very important. So uh, we're, we're in the last the lap here right now, so it's very important that we get maximum effort made. I was about to say, now is the time for the maximum effort, and certainly I'm glad you ran again. Look at the incredible effect you and others have had since your last run four years ago. You've got a real shot if people believe and take action. C Congressman Ron Paul, thank you so much for spending time with us, and go with God. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wow, there goes Congressman.